Hey, it's Theo and uh, thank you for joining me. Today I want to make a bit more of a uh, fun video and instead of looking at the uh, best decks, as uh, you usually see, we're actually looking at the very worst decks on ladder. Basically the best decks to stay at the bronze 10. Also, all of these decks have at least 200 games and multiple people piloting it. So it isn't just uh, one player trying to make these decks work. Now you can see already the win rate of the decks here and I've got uh, well, 13 of them. Uh, 10 real decks and then 3 decks that are here with the uh, absolutely atrocious win rate. Because they're like pre-made core decks from Blizzard. I won't be covering them much like you see it just like all the free cards and yeah, absolutely no win con at all. I'm surprised it uh, won even 1% of its games. I think you see the same here with Death Knight. Like 6% of the time I guess the Scourge can win if you even survive there. Just yeah, just no synergy at all. I'm not even sure why Blizzard has these deck recipes for these decks because they're kind of pointless. You don't want anybody to play with these even if even if you're a new player, these, these just are horrible, horrible. It's just better to play those uh, loner decks. But we do have uh, 10 decks that are actually uh, real decks. Well, kind of real decks that people really tried something with this deck. It just sadly, uh, yeah, isn't working. So I kind of want to be looking at, you know, what makes the deck so bad and uh, well, why isn't it working? So first of all, we have a 29.5% win rate. It's uh, a Pain Demon Hunter. Now... I know some people have played like Pain Demon like Jambre, and you can do all right with it, but uh, yeah, this build isn't doing it. And why is that? Well, I think it's because there's uh, the few cards missing or a few cards that don't make any sense. First of all, we got the Glaive Tar. I mean, obviously this is the point of the deck, right? You play Glaive Tar, a bunch of outcast cards, and then you play Arana and just draw into Fatigue, and then all that Fatigue goes to the opponent. So yeah, that can be a ton of damage if you get there. Problem is, however, with this deck, of course, is uh, yeah, trying to make it to that point. And on top of that, this deck uh, only has one Blave Tar. So yeah, if it's in like the bottom five cards, yeah, you're never gonna win. It's like a card I think you always wanna have uh, two of in this kind of deck because this is your win con. It's like playing Big Spell Mage and only playing one Tsunami. Like it just doesn't make sense. Another card is through Fallon Flames, which basically doesn't make sense because uh, yeah, all the minions are uh, super small or yeah, already clear the board and you, know, you don't wanna give rush to run up. So yeah, the deck just too many bad cards and uh, yeah, you're actually not that likely even to win because you only play one Glaive Tar. Now the next deck we have then is uh, slightly worse, 29.2%. Now this Druid deck might look familiar because uh, yeah, this kind of deck is actually pretty popular. Like it's called Starship Druid, but uh, it's only really running the Arcanite Defense Crystal. Not really a real Starship deck with a bunch of Starship pieces. It's just there because it's a taunt. It gives you armor. can be summoned by uh, Oaken Summons. And then uh, you can uh, launch the Starship and then res the Starship with the Hydration Stage. However, there's uh, one big thing missing here. Is, uh, is the Zilliax, the Unkiliax, like usually uh, what lets this deck survive is just Unkiliax and then, well, you res it over and over and you just don't die, right? Because, uh, yeah, the goal is, of course, to play Kill Jaden and then survive a couple of turns so yeah, you can get those big demons, but yeah, you need Unkiliax for this. And for some reason, this deck is uh, not running that Zilliax, but instead is running a 3 mana 5 5 that shuffles when it dies. And well, I can see the one reason that this can be good is that uh, Oaken Summons is never a dead card with this. It just uh, yeah, completely takes away your win con. It makes Hydration Station way worse because it's a lot harder to actually have uh, like three nice taunts to have with it. And yeah, you're just so less likely to survive because yeah, you're just missing that Zilliax, which often you really need. So yeah, just literally one card choice, I think, just makes this deck absolutely not work at all. Because uh, outside of that, this kind of deck does, does work. But yeah, without the Zilliac, you just won't have enough defensive tools to survive until you can actually play your uh, kill Jaden. So that is this Druid deck. Then we have 28.6% a, 28 a uh, Priest deck. And it's like a Draenei Priest. And uh, yeah, another archetype that just uh, kind of flopped with the set. Got that new Legendary Ascara, but yeah... Uh, what can you copy with it? Like maybe an Ace Wayfinder or a Velen? Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just running Draenei, this deck, right? Just uh, the buff, draw, rush, like, yeah, it's running some Draenei, but none of them are really that good. Like, there's no wind con in the Draenei. It's also running a uh, Mystified Tocha, and yeah, this really leaves me mystified to why this is in the deck, because you're not running any healing, so how are you ever going to get to uh, 42 health exactly? Like, if you want to make this card work, you need a bunch of uh, different hue cards or damage self damage cards, and it only has Nightshade T. Like it's almost impossible to make that card work. And we have cards like uh, yeah, Ace Wayfinder, like five mana five five with two random bonus effects. Yeah, that just doesn't cut it in this meta. And uh, oh, that's why it has this win rate. Then next, then we're going a bit lower with twenty five. 
0.2% win rate is a mage deck. And it's a bit of a weird one because, yeah, it's like it wants to be like excavate. It has the uh, blast mage miner. It has cryopreservation cobalt miner. But then it's not running the five mana borrow buster to have more excavate. So it's uh, kind of harder to get that form of excavate, which is really why you want to play this deck. Other, some other cards are good though, right? I mean, just solid cards in this deck. I would say there's like two really, really bad cards in this deck. And first of all, it's the first appearance of uh, Champions of Azeroth, the, uh, the new card from uh, this celebration of 30 years of Warcraft. And uh, yeah, th this card is terrible. Like, you spent four mana to get two terrible legendaries. Yeah, uh, just not worth it. And this deck is uh, running two of them. And also we have the uh, Ingenious Artificer, which usually makes the next Drenna you play free, but there is no Drenna in the deck. All right, that's, that's not completely true. There's one Drenna here in EDC with uh, XR Kataru. Don't ask me why there's a bounty board. But yeah, that's literally the only Draenei there is. So you're main decking a card that needs another card, but that needs to be played in ETC first. It just doesn't make any sense. And I guess there's also a Thaithlin here. So yeah, I guess you can make those Champions of Azeroth cost four less. Yeah, you have to spend four mana to maybe play two of them for less. So you get two bad legendaries for minus six mana each. So then you still probably have to spend over 10 mana just to get two legendaries overall. Just awful. Like, I'm surprised that even wins 25% of the time. Maybe just, uh, maybe the x part is just carrying the deck. Then just below that win rate is a 25.1% is a uh, like a thief rogue, but it's running a whole bunch of cards that, that don't really make sense. So we got uh, Bronze Gatekeeper, and the only other mech we have, I think, is the uh, Ziliac. So uh, the, that doesn't really need extra health, right? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We've got uh, Snatch and Grab, so you have to play cards from another class, but there aren't many thief cards actually in this deck, if you can, as you can see. The only thief card there is is basically Maestra, so you have to play Maestra. Then play the other class, and then you can start playing cards from other classes and actually make this, uh, well, I wouldn't even say worth it, but playable, maybe. But the most baffling choice in this list is the uh, Sharp Shipment. And uh, yeah, maybe you noticed it, but uh, this deck does not have a weapon. <laughs> maybe the idea behind this deck is you go Maestra, and you get maybe like uh, the uh, Paladin Hero card Carriol, and then you get like an infinite four attack weapon. Maybe that's it. Or you get like Rokara, and then you get like a seven four weapon with it. Like, maybe that's it. But yeah, to play one card that depends on Maestra to work like that. Yeah, that <laughs> does not make a lot of sense to me. And then you also have Tess. So you're just going to be replaying all the rogue cards. So I guess the idea with this deck is... You play test and you get the Shadow Step or your own card and you replay the Sharp Shipment. So yeah, you keep buffing that weapon, I guess. But yeah, if you don't get the weapon, it's terrible. Like this card useless. Yeah, it just doesn't really work. That's why it only went a quarter of the games. Now let's go a bit lower with 25%. And uh, yeah, this is an actual Starship Druid deck. It, uh, it flopped with the expansion. Yeah, it kind of sucks because I had uh, fun playing it in the theory craft thing. But yeah, I guess the battle is just too fast for this kind of deck to work. Just the early game really lacks. And this deck, honestly, there's not even too much wrong with it. Like, it's, maybe, it's missing a crystal cluster. Like, you really don't want that. Also, uh, astral phases aren't that great. Crystal ball is even. Like, two mana four or fives aren't great. Yeah, other than that, it's almost a, <laughs> a fair deck that plays for board. The only problem is then, if you're facing a faster deck, you probably lose with this deck, right? Because you don't have enough early game. And then against a slower deck, uh, you only have kind of limited amounts of value because this deck isn't running kill Jaden. So then it would possibly just run out of value because if a deck has a few board clears, yeah, this uh, this deck just will lose to it. And yeah, that's kind of why it has that 25% win rate. The next, now we're going really low, below 20% win rate. So that the wins less than one in five games. It's uh, this Shaman deck. And you might be wondering when you see the Shaman deck, what the hell is the win con? How does it even win uh, one in five times? And well, we have to look in the ETC for that, because it's running Harf. Well, that's not that relevant, but it's running Kalibos, and it's running Alexstrasza. So the goal of this deck is, uh, you play uh, Murmur, right? So you battle Crimeenius cost one. Then you have four mana left. Then you play the Shadow Block, so you have three mana left. Then you play the ETC, so you get all three options from ETC. So you have two mana left. Uh, then you play Alexstrasza. You have one mana left, then you play Shadow Block again for the triple battle cry, so you have zero mana left, and then you play Kalimos, and then yes, you need one more mana, but we got two cards to make it happen with either uh, the Fairy Tale Forest or the Parrot Sanctuary. So this combo should always cost 10 mana or less, so yeah, that's the combo. It, uh, it really doesn't do much else. And then uh, yeah, that requires you to get to turn 10, and it requires you to draw all those cards, and it requires you to also have played an elemental the turn before, and uh, yeah, there's only two elementals in this deck with Melt Elemental and uh, Turbulus. And you need the elemental to uh, enable a Kalimos so that this invocation actually works. And yes, Kalimos does actually work with Shadow Block. Because technically you triple the Battle Cry, but the Battle Cry doesn't actually deal damage. It gets you the 
invocation and that invocation deals damage so it's kind of a loophole that's why color boss does work with shell block and that's the idea of this deck but yeah it uh, it only works one in five times i got the idea but it that doesn't really work out then we have another rogue deck at 18.3 percent and we've got another appearance of the uh, champions of azeroth now the, the idea behind this deck is uh, basically just uh use a bunch of uh, champions of azeroth with the usual uh, sonya stuff that rogue does but yeah, instead of winning the game with that, uh, you just get some bad legendaries. This deck does also have Grifta, so that's also a way you can win like usually Rogue does. But uh, yeah, besides that, uh, you're relying on random legendaries, uh, a lot of them. But these don't really win, that's why nobody plays this card. Also what this deck is missing compared to the like the normal Psycho Rogue is just uh, like early mid game. Like usually they play like a bunch of four drops for free on like turn three, four. Giants on like turn 5-6, so you can actually contest the board. But uh, yeah, this deck has none of it. It's just literally that combo. And uh, yeah, it takes a lot to set up and then it doesn't even win. Then next up, we have another 18% win rate deck. We have another Demon Hunter deck. And this time it's a uh, Kill Jaden Demon Hunter, which you've probably never seen on ladder for a uh, good reason. So yeah, the idea of this deck is you uh, play the weapon on Pyre's Grasp. You have even a tutor for it and a space pirate to reduce it. Into this on two or the weapon on three. After that, it's completely dead. Because Kill Jaden is the only demon. So yeah, the idea is just play Kill Jaden basically turn five or turn four of the coin. And then you have a bunch of card throw in your hand. Got that Paralyte, Sigil, Warp Drive, Weight of the World. So yeah, you want to get early kill Jaden, uh, draw a bunch, and then get those demons. Uh, problem with this deck is, of course, yeah, you get an early kill Jaden, you uh, draw those uh, demons. Yeah, they're not buffed yet early on, right? So they don't do a lot. They actually cost a lot of mana because you're at like five, six mana after you played it. Uh, so you can't even play that much. And then you have to contest with uh, actual decks doing actually good things. And yeah, that uh, that doesn't really work. And then you're very reliant on uh, yeah, also having the draw cards in it. Although you have a lot of them, so that should work. But then yeah, after maybe a few draw cards, then you're just going to be drawing one demon a turn and just doesn't really win. Plus, yeah, if you fall behind on board, this deck has no way to really come back consistently. And uh, yeah, early kill Jaden. In theory, it could be something good. But uh, yeah, in this deck, it just does not work at all. And then we go to the very worst deck that actually tries to do something, and it's this, uh, well, Adaptive Amalgam uh, Death Knight. So, the idea with this is uh, basically get infinite ceaseless expenses. Every turn you get one of them, and uh, yeah, in theory that's pretty good, right? A 15-15 uh, play the board every turn. So yeah, if the opponent needs to win on board, they can't win. But yeah, that only starts like turn 10 or something, because only by turn 10 usually you can play this card. Plus, you still need to set up the combo and draw the other cards. Because basically what you need to do is uh, play the Adaptive Amalgam, then you play the Brain Gill. So Adaptive Amalgam has the depth rattle of uh, draw a card, and it shuffles. And then you play Death Crawl on the Adaptive Amalgam when there's a Ceaseless Expense. So basically you play Ceaseless first, right? Then you play Adaptive. Then you play uh, the Brain Gill, and then you play Death Growl on the Adaptive. And then you just give this Death Rattle to Ceaseless, and then Ceaseless becomes... When this dies, shuffle this card in the deck with the enchantments, which includes draw a card. Yeah, you play it, it dies, it shuffles, draws a card, and then you get it immediately again. Now, I'm not sure if there's more combos that this deck is trying to do. It's also having some weird ETC choices. It's having Brewmaster, Messmaker, and Eternal Layover. But yeah, why this deck doesn't work right, it needs this whole combo to set it up. And besides that, yeah, the deck isn't uh, isn't really doing anything. And you basically need to go to turn 10 for this to even work, first of all, to get to this point. So yeah, most decks just went before that, right? And then after turn 10, well, all you get, I mean, it's pretty good, the 15-15. But yeah, most decks that go late, they can just deal with this or uh, yeah, ignore it and just kill you from hand. So this combo just uh, barely, barely works. Well, you can see, right, it works about... 13.8% of the time. So those are the uh, the 10 worst decks on ladder. But they're all trying to do something. It just, yeah, unfortunately it didn't work out for that build. But at least uh, they're trying out new stuff. Please let me know in the comments down below if you've ever actually played one of these decks. Or if you think maybe, you know, there's something in these decks, like uh, you can maybe improve it to actually become a meta player. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and until next time.